Here, how does somebody die after a tonsillectomy? It is a question that's haunted a Utah mother for months after her son's death. Tonight, a new study provides a solution to the worst case scenario in same day surgeries. New specialist Andrew Adams learned about it. Andrew? Well, Intermountain Health researchers were behind this study. As it turns out, it wasn't the same day surgeries that were the problem, it was how those surgeries were treated afterward and how those patients were monitored. Brains afterwards thinking, were there things that we missed? It was a death that stunned family in small town eastern Utah. We didn't. We didn't see anything. Parker Stewart seemed fine. He was just tired and, you know, he went to bed a little bit early that night. And then suddenly. Six hours later, he would be gone. His mother, Yvonne Gardner, still deals with the shock. I'm like, what? He just went in for a routine tonsillectomy. How come my son is dead? Clarity came six months later. Our ENT that had operated on my son, he told us that this is something that could be caused by respiratory depression brought on by the opioids. Opioid-induced respiratory depression is responsible for roughly 80,000 deaths a year across the country, according to health statistics. As your breathing is compromised, this could lead into end organ dysfunction, heart attacks, strokes. Researchers at Intermountain Health began studying the issue in 2019 in hopes of better outcomes in same-day surgical procedures and they found a potential solution. So this was the initial where we started, and now we're heading to this. Simple devices that monitor oxygen levels in the blood and then notify caregivers when there's a breathing problem. We helped in the design of this model, this unencumbered model. Watch how quickly it responds. Researchers said the study found this type of monitoring greatly improved the survival rate. 26 patients responded uh, or were sent to the ER and sought emergency care. We had 14 saves. This research, I believe, is crucial to helping families. Gardner says she believes in the study's findings. The monitoring in the homes is, for me, the simplest solution to resolve this issue. And she hopes for better outcomes for other families in the future. It's such a simple change that can save so many lives. It's important to know that the study involved patients who are considered at risk for this type of thing, and risk factors included sleep apnea. Now, the researchers' findings are published in the Respiratory Care Journal. Back to you guys. All right, Andrew Adams, live for us this evening. Andrew, thank you.